Hi, I'm Rob Craig, and this is the making of Punchy's Kinetic Playground stop motion animation. The original was released in 2010, so we're looking at this 14 years later, and this is the old video on YouTube. It managed to get 4,000 plays until the time that I took it off of my personal channel, and I am now reproducing this video in an upscaled way on my Silverball podcast channel, which of course is directed to pinball and retro gaming enthusiasts. So what you're going to see is a video that I made 14 years ago during the stop motion animation process for Punchy the Clown. And, you know, I, I would really like to do it again. This was fun, but it was a tremendous amount of work. And some people that saw this that were pinball people suggested that I do Twilight Zone. And I just couldn't even imagine doing Twilight Zone, honestly. It's so difficult and so many pieces to pull off and to disassemble the power play field. Imagine that. And just that alone, you eventually have to get it disconnected from everything under the play field and move it out. Man, that's, that's a chore. The gumball machine. Not to say that I would never do it, but the incentive is just not there, you know. But what does inspire me is whenever people like you share this video, especially the one where it's the actual animation, and you share it with other people, the hope and goal is to inspire somebody to try to do some more stop motion animation with pinball machines or just to get you into pinball and appreciate the electronics and the mechanical parts that make up a pinball machine. Hi, I'm Rob Craig, and uh, this is the making of the Punchy the Clown stop motion animation. And as you can see here, this is Punchy, and the first phase of the stop motion is complete. The play field was completely loaded with all kinds of different pieces. There were metal rails and posts, rubber rings, lamps, and uh, all that stuff has been taken off. And and is slowly, very slowly, through about 780 or so frames, uh, it has managed to, to work its way off of the play field. And so the next part of it is to uh, cover it with Novus, and I'm gonna take a look and see if uh, that's got a nice enough tint, and if it doesn't, I'll clean all that off, and I will go back with car wax. And the idea here is to tint this so that whenever the reassembly occurs, um, it'll dull out the, the artwork, and then I will clean that artwork off uh, after the game is uh, at a certain point in its assembly so that you can really see the coloring of the play field here, Punchy's face. Uh, probably before I go back with the final plastics, I'll really clean that up. Now, while I wouldn't probably advise that for somebody who's restoring a game, the idea here, of course, is to do a, a good stop motion piece. So that's the goal. And so let me give you a little tour around for a second, and uh, you'll get to see uh, a little bit about this uh, camera rig that I set up and, and why I had to set that up, and, um, and just a little bit about the process, okay? A shot of the play field. Um, just take you a nice quick look at this machine. It's a short machine. And the reason why I chose a short machine is because a short machine uh, can fill the frame of this camera. And I'll swing around here so you can see this. This is a Canon Rebel. Um, it's a pretty nice looking camera. Uh, it's generic. I mean, really, uh, for it's a generic SLR camera. But you could do this with less. You wouldn't have to have this Canon uh, Rebel. You know, you could do it with something a lot smaller. Now, notice how I've mounted this. It's mounted up here in a, with a bracket. Uh, that bracket is just a piece of metal with a couple of wood screws in it. And then, if I come around this way, 
you can see exactly how I mounted it. You see that? That screw right there. Let me zoom in on that. That's about six dollars worth of stuff at a hardware store. Okay, and then <clears throat> the wood framing. Uh, what I did is I just built sort of a triangle. You can see how it goes all the way down here, and it comes across. And that stabilizes it from going back and forth. Um, and then it actually attaches to the machine right up there with a couple of screws. Uh, that I was very careful about um, screwing those into the top of the cabinet. Also notice that it's not in the center, it's moved over so that the camera is in a nice spot there. But the camera when it shoots down it has a nice spot there of the play field and it's not off center. And then down here you can look at the, uh, the, plate, the uh, pinball machine it has these lifts here to kind of level it out you can see that it's the, the goal here is to level the game the play field if the play fields are not level then stuff rolls around and then finally changing memory can be a bit of a pain but up here I can see what's going on with my camera So there's my information about the camera. Down here, I can access the battery. And then over here, I can access the memory. For lighting, I have this makeshift light here. And then a couple of lights there. And another light there which gives me a pretty good amount of lighting over the game. Playfield map, that's one of the actual shots from the camera. It takes shots like this. I printed that out on a printer that's losing its ink. Uh, here's some of the metal parts there, over there. Screws, bolts, playfield parts. And these are the photos, page after page after page. About 12 hours, we're halfway through. Hey everybody, it's Rob Craig again, and um, this is my last night of shooting, I hope. Uh, Punchy, the animated video where Punchy has been disassembled and reassembled, and well, now Punchy is on its way to being completed, and we're really close. So uh, there's been an additional, there's been a change, there's been an additional camera that's been added uh, so we can get two angles. So we kind of have a A-roll and a B-roll photographic uh, stop motion piece going on, so we'll handle that mixing say we uh, loosely it'll be me anyway here's the second camera that's set up here this is another rebel and this rebel is uh, set up in very much the same way as the one up here 
um, f-stop ISO and uh, shutter all that is is the same one of the biggest challenges in doing such a thing as a stop motion like this is going to be related to changing batteries um, or pulling one out charging it and then pulling data off the memory card so to do that you know is, is tricky and you got to be very sensitive very careful so that you can you can get the stuff out and with this mount up here uh, I've actually had pretty good results with uh, getting it out without much of a problem. Uh, it's made sturdy, so it's going to hold it. But down here, this guy here has been a little um, touchy, you know. Not to mention the fact that in making this thing, I have to get inside the play field uh, underneath the plywood here to actually do a few things. So if you look at the play field there, <clears throat> this being the play field, these uh, flippers, you know, if I lift the play field up, the flippers are disconnected, so they'll just roll up. It's very important that if I have to get in there that the last frame that I shot has them both down, both up, or both of them pointed at a, at a, a certain alignment spot. So that's a little tricky. And then of course if I have anything laying on the play field, when I lift it up all that stuff will, will change. Now notice that the only thing that's lit up here is just these lights, all these lights here called general elimination. Those are the only ones lit up. None of the uh, lights that flash underneath these plastic inserts uh, is actually flashing. And the reason for that is because in, in reanimating Punchy in this uh, stop frame piece, or stop motion piece, um, we, don't, we haven't animated this part yet. But we have animated each one of these individually. So I've had to remove a fuse and do some tricks there electronically to, to, to stop the computer from running lights. But getting underneath the play field is tricky because, as you can see, I have this this tripod with the camera. Now I've had the coin door open, but you know I have limited access because it, what I have to do is reach inside here to activate anything underneath the play field. And on top of that, because my frame, see that frame up there, this here, uh, this frame actually only allows me to lift the play field up so high. In addition to that. Turns out that my light rack right there, you see that? Uh, it's just a microphone mount. But I can't move my lighter. That'll change a lot about the about how this looks. So the lighting uh, is obstructing my ability to get into this to the head here and open up the back glass and do anything I want to with <laughs> altering the electronics. So it's turned out to be um, quite a challenge. But uh, hopefully it'll be fun. So tonight's the last night of shooting. It's been five uh, days. Of this, uh, so about 35 hours. So, what was not covered in that documentary 14 years ago has to do with audio. And so, while I looked through my own archives and could not find the original sound effect wave files that I had pulled and spent two, three days just arranging and trying to decide whether or not I like them. What I did find are a couple of files that are interesting. And so I want to go through those with you here. The first file I'm going to play is what I have called the Jingle Loopable 33 Seconds. I have it soloed out. So let's just have a listen to what that sounds like here. <laughs> That eerie circus music. That music is actually from the game, and I have used the reverb effect, and then I mix that back down and save that as a loopable 33 second piece there. I probably pulled those, if I recall correctly, from Visual Pinball, directly from the ROMs, and then I exercised a little engineering, audio engineering work here in Adobe Audition. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty eerie. I wanted to, you had to put some reverb in it because it's very dull coming straight out of the ROM. Here are a couple of sound effects too that I used. I did find these, um, but these are it from the arrangement. So that one would have been a, a short swoosh. We might call that with those that deal with audio effects. Here's a long swoosh coming up used for sliding things around on the play field. But there were so many more than that. 
and each one of them had to have their audio leveled up and tweaked. And so the arrangement, when it was completely done, is up here in this top track. I'm going to solo it out and play it for you. This would go right along with the video if you've seen it. Hopefully you have. And the music is isolated out. So here's all of the effects without any music. Quite a few of them. And that's just the first segment there. I spent quite a bit of time whenever I was making this video um, just messing around with recording specific sounds, trying to get what, you know, a cartoon creator might come up with in order to make those sounds almost funny in some cases. That first sound I actually remember making. Uh, that was me dropping screws into a metal pan, probably even a, a cat or dog bowl. Listen to this again. There's a, there's probably five effects in just that piece. Now, if you hear that noise, it sounds like wind. It probably was. I wanted to make a very dull swooshing effect as if plastics and things were moving around things moving around on the play field might create that noise. It's so important to not recycle the same sounds again and again. It would just sound rhythmic and there's not a lot of rhythmic action, maybe for a moment, but then it changes to something else. That's probably the sound of cleaning. Now, the, the stretchy sounds that you're hearing are actually in reverse. So those sounds have been changed from whatever they were originally. And if we want to take a listen for that, let's find it. All right. So what I can do is uh, find it, isolate it there in the track. I think it's right here. All right. Let's, <laughs> let's do this one right here. And I might have changed the pitch on some of those. So uh, that's, that's absolutely possible. Um, I ought to be able to do a real quick reverse here. Yeah, I just did. Let's listen to it. So yeah, I just, that's, that's what they should sound like, but how they really sound, um, let me reverse those back is like this. Yeah, so hopefully you think that's pretty cool. I, I love doing those kinds of things. I don't want it to sound uh, cheesy, but it should sound interesting in the mix. Mm -hmm. If I could go back and do this again, I would certainly add a little more bassy element to these things. Why did I put a ringy ding in there? I have no idea. Um, let me just hustle this along though, because I'm sure I'm losing some of you guys that don't care so much about audio. This little bit here, um, let's see what that is. What is that? Hi kid, oh. I put you the clown. Yeah, that is, you know, straight out of the, the EEPROM, <laughs> but it's got some reverb to it. Hi kid. And that was used using an effect here in Audition. And then the soundtrack, which was amazing. When making this, I really wanted to just find anything that was mellow and made the mystery of what was happening before your eyes more alive through the audio for the soundtrack and punchy the clowns music just wasn't going to do it i needed something mysterious so i felt like this was it i probably listened to a hundred different 
open source or, or free tunes out there, um, uh, something that you didn't have to license. And this one won out above them all. And I played 20 of them, I'm sure, against the animation to see which ones just felt better. And this one won. Um, I'm very, very thankful for those people who make these types of freely available songs. Um, so I want to give them credit for what they do. And in the case of this one, this one was done by Robert Myers, or Myers, The Magnificent Escape. And it's just great, man. So probably Robert Myers will never see this, but if he ever did, I just want to thank you for allowing this to be used. Yeah, if you enjoy this, I'm just enjoying the music. If you enjoy this, please share it with somebody. Hopefully it'll inspire them to do something creative, something artistic, and share it with the world.